Hello, hello, and welcome to Games Revisited. It is the start of Season 6, and we're getting ready to play Crystallis. Crystallis is a classic NES game. Now, when I say classic NES, I'm talking about uh, after I had my Atari 2800. Kids, ask your parents. And uh, it, it, it goes back to ye old days when all you had was an A and a B and you liked it. There were there were there was no no X or Y, no shoulder buttons. And speaking of shoulders, you didn't have some fancy ergonomic controller that fit comfortably in your hand. You had a rectangle. And it hurt. And you played it both ways, uphill in the snow. Okay. Uh, enough of the cranky old man thing. <clears throat> so, Crystallis is a game that came out in 1990 for the Nintendo Entertainment System or the Famicom System, depending on, you know, where what part of the world you were in. And it was released in 1990, as you can see in the copyright screen. Uh, nope, nope. There we go. That way. Uh, it's on that side, on my side. All right. Does that make sense? All right. No worries. And... It is regarded as something of a cult classic for the Nintendo. It was one of a number of games that came out after The Legend of Zelda's popularity said, hey, people really like RPGs. So this is a little top-down-ish. It, it is first-person, real-time, action-oriented RPG. You're playing through a protagonist who has memory issues, and I love having a protagonist I can relate to. <clears throat> and and, and it, it was generally a widely regarded game so something to keep in mind as we before that uh i am going to run this series using an emulated rom of the game on my computer so i'm using fceux uh, i'm sure there's a way to pronounce that acronym i don't know it i believe it's french don't quote me on that. Uh, <clears throat> there is a an SNK anniversary, 40th anniversary package available on Steam. So rather than try to hunt down ROMs uh, of questionable origin on the darker places of the internet, one of the things you can do is go to Steam. You can buy the SNK 40th anniversary collection, and it will have this and 23 other games that SNK released between uh, the mid 70s up through 1990. Uh, Crystallis is the last one in the series because after that, SNK went to do uh, Dreamcast stuff. We, we, we see how well that worked out for him. <clears throat> um, or one out if you remember the Dreamcast. It, it okay, that, that's getting away from things. All right. So, uh, what ended up happening though is in two thousand. I know I'm all over the place. I need another cup of coffee. I, I might even make one when I get a chance to do an intermission. Uh, what happened was, what ha happened was. <laughs> You know something good's about to start when you got to go over there. Uh, in 2000, Nintendo decided that they wanted to, um, depending on your point of view, they either wanted to reinvigorate your nostalgia for classic games from Nintendo's history, or they wanted a shameless cash grab plucking on the heartstrings of people who had already bought the game once. depending on where you sit in the spectrum. Crystallis was one of the games that they redid for the Game Boy Color in 2000. I'm not playing that version. I refuse to play that version. All the original music was drug out back, shot, and they I, I think they accidentally put some other games music in there because it doesn't fit. They changed the origin story. They changed various plot points. They reordered the bosses and added an extra one. Uh, they they made a you know, If you remember a couple of seasons ago when we played Chrono Trigger, we played the Chrono Trigger re-release that Steam offers. And it's glorious. They did a texture update. They updated the graphics. It, it 
Uh, they they made the sound better quality, you know, within keeping true to the original. So you played Chrono Trigger in a way that benefited the display you have at your hands with a PC, but true to the original Super Nintendo experience. That's not what Nintendo did with the Crystallis remake in 2000. And that's why I didn't get the 40th anniversary package from Steam because I wasn't sure which version of the game was included. I wasn't sure if it was the original 1990 experience or if it was the 2000 tragedy. Uh, at some point I will go buy it and, and start poking around and seeing which is which. I, I just... I don't have that kind of spare cash to, to spend and for, for something that's not going to help. So we're playing the ROM. That means you are getting some very classic graphics. Uh, the emulator doesn't actually get captured by XSplit very well. So I, I've tried to carefully crop all the unnecessary parts of the screen so you could get just what's there. It's, uh, if, if I messed up on the crop, let, let me know in the comments. Uh, if you're watching this later on YouTube or let me know in chat, not that I can do anything live, but at least I'll know, I'll know what's going on. Also, uh, give, give me, give me a, a couple episodes to get the, the volumes right with all that, all that said and done. Let's, uh, yeah, I'm not going to get into the plot summary. What we are going to do is I'm going to let the, the introduction run because this is the story that you start with. This is what, this is what you, you get in your rundown and, and then we'll, we'll go from there. I will point out unlay <laughs> this is where some of the more interesting aspects of early game consoles come in. You're going to find some curiously worded items some curiously abbreviated things because um, it was a miracle that we got stuff on the NES in the first place. Given given the the I want to say it was the eight bit, eight bit, sixteen bit, somewhere in there. We're we're talking that range. Uh, memory limitations, storage limitations. Um, it's why you saw games with all sorts of, of creatively worded things because you only had but so much memory space and you did the best you could with it. Uh, I wonder sometimes if games, it's not so much that games got easier as time went on as it is uh, you, you could actually have the memory and processing power and storage to handle a little more handholding as time went on. That, that's a good, that's a good debate for your next philosophy paper. So, uh, <laughs> all right, with all that said and done, let's go through the introduction. We'll, we'll, we'll introduce you to our hero and then, and then we'll see where we go from there. So here we go. 1997, October 1st, the end day. Savage war engulfs the world. A civilization is destroyed. An evolution had taken place. The Earth's axis shifted and all creatures became mutated. Life would never be the same. Those surviving vowed not to repeat their mistakes of the past and erected a great tower in the sky. To oppress evil forever. Okay, you're probably getting the sense that that didn't go as well. Oh, here we go. 100 years have passed. Most of the Earth has become dominated by mutated creatures. People work together to rebuild their villages and their lives, but they still lived in fear. As they feared the rebirth of evil, they remembered the construction of the tower and its consequences once activation had begun. Once evil emerged, would they still stand a chance? There was still one hope. <gasps> Uh-oh. 
Program 256, functional. System 1024, functional. Condition green. Input code name. Uh, that's right. All right, let's try this again. Uh, you, you don't get many characters to put in your name, by the by. Uh, I don't miss this part of putting stuff in. Right on, Junior. There we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at the high tech. <laughs> oh, the 90s were glorious. All right. I think I got that crop pretty well done. Here we are. The hero. Um... This is your inventory screen. <laughs> uh, speaking of inventory, yeah, you got a three by, you got a three by eight grid of inventory items. One of those rows of eight is um, reserved for quest items, whether you want it or not. You get a row of eight magic, and uh, you can only have four swords, four armors, four shields, and four powers. You do have the option to save and load. There are a whopping two save slots. Two. Uh, there's also a status screen that you can go to, which will show you your avatar, your condition, whether it's normal or poisoned or any of a couple others, your current level and attack, your life, you know, current life, max hit points, and your defense. Defense. Also, it'll show you what you have equipped on your A button, what you have equipped on your B button, and what you have for your armor and shield. I meant to mention this in the beginning, so I will gripe about it now. I don't know if you, you guys remember the classic Nintendo or a lot of the Nintendo-like systems, but I've got a PC controller by Logitech. And what you may or may not be able to tell in the video is that Logitech considers that a B and that an A. The Xbox considers that a B and that an A. Nintendo's, particularly the one that we're emulating now, Nintendo and Super Nintendo, the ga the consoles of my youth, consider that to be an A and that to be a B. I didn't realize just how ingrained some of the muscle memories of my youth were until I noticed that my A's and B's were not lined up. So, forgive me a little bit. I am going to stick to the actual button mapping, just in case I, I, I end up looking for the button I'm looking for. And, and instead of remapping it so that way A is B and B is A. I, I've actually tried finding a controller that... Um, was actually set up like the classic Nintendo controllers. And while I found a couple that work, work with an asterisk, uh, I've not found any that work well. Uh, this, this Logitech F310, this Logitech F310 uh, has served me well many, many years. And eventually I, I probably will get an Xbox style controller Something a little bit, a little bit more modern that actually has more modern drivers for it, because uh, right now I, I'm I'm coasting in on the Xbox compatibility mode that this has, because it was designed to be compatible with the first Xbox, oh, only without the rendering of death. Okay, <clears throat> so this is your status screen. Uh, you'll notice down at the bottom you've got your little health bar for your life force you got your force we'll get into that in a little bit 
you got your experience. We have zero experience. Uh, 30 XP will get us to the next level. It shows that we have level one and we have no money. Again, a hero I can relate with. Uh, we've also got 34 magic points that we can't do anything with because we have not yet acquired any magic. <clears throat> Alright, let's uh, walk out of this cave from our cryostasis. Hey, there's a guy coming out of the cave. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Uh, we can go back into that cave later if we need to. And, uh, again, because your button options were limited and they didn't want you swinging a sword at people, you just kind of bump into them and they talk to you. That is both a benefit and a drawback. This is the village of Leaf. There are great dangers outside of town. Please be careful. Alright, so we've got our standard inn. I, I will not go into the inn because I cannot afford the inn. I have no money uh, we've got our standard armory, our item shop, our random person walking around who will talk to you if you bump into them. The wind here is always cold, but we're used to it. Is Leaf in Wisconsin? Oh, all right. I mean, I guess technically it could be Texas. You have finally awoken. This money is from the wise man Zebu. It's yours. Hey, hundred bucks. Easiest hundred bucks you're going to make all game. I'm the first pupil of Zebu. You must bow down before me. Uh, say what? Hmm, no. Alright, um, there you are. Did you visit the Elder's house yet? Why, no, I haven't, helpful man wandering on the edge. Hey. Talk to me. Oh, it's you. I'm sorry I ran from you when we first met. Zebu says he's having a hard time with the windmill guard. He's always sleeping. That is actually a hint. This is back when games were sometimes a little more subtle with their hints. Alright, is that the last person... That is one thing that I, I don't miss is the uh, pacing around to find if you've or bumped into all the people wandering around. All right. Uh, what's in here? Caillou, Caillou. Hmm. I wonder if he'll be important later. I'm the village elder. You awoke from inside the cave, didn't you? I guess I did. We were told you would arrive. You are our last hope to defeat evil. Receive this sword to protect you on your quest. It's almost like they're trying to tell you that it's dangerous to go alone. <laughs> you now have the Sword of Wind. Yeah, that's not riffing on the Zelda stuff at all, is it? There's an old windmill to the north, but I've never seen it working. That, dear folks, is another hint. Please be careful. Our destiny is in your hands. We are so screwed. <laughs> Alright. So it's dangerous to go outside. We've been given a sword of wind, which we've now equipped. Um... Uh, so the B button will swing your sword and you'll notice that that force bar charges up as you hold the button down. That's because you can charge up your wind sword and shoot a little burst of wind uh, when you're at full health. No, even after you're damaged. I I'm confusing two different games. Sorry. Let's go in here. Do you wish to buy? Why, yes, I wish to buy. What would I like to get for my $100? I can get a carpet shield for 80 or a tanned hide for 100 Uh, Let me run by my manual here real quick. Because I'm trying to remember which is going to get you the better defense. 
the tanned hide is going to get you a plus two to defense. And the carpus shield is going to get you a plus two to defense. Ah, but the carpus shield is only going to give you a ranged defense and we can get it 70 bucks cheaper at the next place. Or sorry, $10 cheaper at the next place. Although we kind of need something now. Um, so armor protects you from melee damage. Shields protect you from ranged damage. They do make that distinction. It is one you will have to remember. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the tanned hide. Nope. And I am going to equip the tanned hide. So if we look, we now have an attack of two because we actually have a sword. We have a defense of three for melee and one for ranged because we actually have armor, but no shield. We'll, we'll get to some of that other stuff. And before we venture outside the village of Leaf, I'm going to go ahead and save the game. I'm going to overwrite something I was playing many, many years ago. Uh, many moons ago. And this seems like the perfect spot to take a little break. Well, that was fun. Unless I died. Then it was a little less fun. I hope you enjoyed the series so far. The next episode should roll out tomorrow, unless tomorrow's a live stream day. The current schedule is over on my Twitch profile. There's a link in the description below. If you haven't already, do follow in Twitch. That way you'll get notified when I go live, allowing you to chat along as we record the next six episodes. Or chat along with whatever else I got going on. I do a variety of things, just like here. Speaking of here, if you're not already, please do subscribe to the channel. It really helps out. Click the bell and you'll no get notified of all the new content produced from future games revisited episodes to Coffee Craft Livestream Archives, instrument repair, upgrades, and construction, and uh, anything else that strikes my fancy. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and if you have any questions, quips, queries, quandaries, quotes, complaints, comments, or quibbles, just uh, leave those in the comments below. Have fun, enjoy, and I'll see you next time.